Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this wavy micro macrame bracelet. And this is what mine looks like. So you have all these little beaded waves kind of intertwining with each other. And it's a really nice and simple bracelet. And I just made a little loop there and then a button for the closure. So it's really nice and simple and easy to wear and to use. It's going to sit like this around your wrist. It'll be really nice and comfortable to wear as well. So if you want to learn how to make this bracelet, then stay tuned. And these are then the materials that we're going to need. Now first of all, we need whatever cord we want to use. In this case, I'm working with a 0.4 mil Eslon in this nice light blue color. And to go with that, I'm using a selection of beads here. The first ones are kind of the main beads. These are three millimeter rounds, and I'm just using some blue coated hematite gemstone beads. That's just what I'm gonna use. And you can also change up the size of your beads here. It's completely up to you. That's just what I'm going to be demonstrating with. And just bear in mind, using other ones will give a different look. And then the little ones here, these are some 11 o seed beads, just in a regular black colour. And these are going to be kind of the flourish on the outside of the main beads here. And then finally, we need a button, because I'm doing a loop and a button closure for this bracelet. This is just a shank button. I thought the colour of this would go nicely with the colour scheme of the blue and the black tones here. So let's get all the materials together. And let's get started. So for this we'll need two lengths of cord. Now the first one here is the shorter one and that's about one meter long. This is going to mainly be the holding cord throughout, that's why it's shorter than the other one. And then the other cord that we're going to need is about two meters long. So this is just really general guideline for the length because it also depends on the exact materials that you use but also the length you want your bracelet to be. So this is the longer one we're going to make the most knotting work with. So then the first thing that I've done here is I've taken my short length of cord and attached that to my macrame board here just so it's easy to work with. And then what I've made sure of is about the middle is where it is on the middle of the board here. Because we want to make a section of knots here to be able to make the loop and then have about equal length on both sides of that that we're going to use for the rest of the bracelet. And then what we also need to do is take our long piece of cord here and I put the ends together so to also find roughly where the middle is. And then I have a loop here where that mid part is. So what I'm going to do with this is attach this to my holding cord that's on the board here. And I'm also I'm doing this from the middle because we need to end up with about equal lengths on both sides once we've done the loop part here. So I take this loop that I'm holding on to that's the middle of the cord. And then to attach it to the holding cord there I bring it underneath from the top. And then take my fingers through the loop. Put them through and then grab hold of the two tails and pull them all the way through. And then you'll end up with something like that. It's a bit like a pretzel shape. Then when we tighten this around the holding cord, it's gonna sit nice and tight and be attached. And this is then a lax head knot. So now to keep building a row of knots here to be able to make that into the loop, what I'm gonna do is you'll find that your two ends of your cord here are coming out naturally to each their own side. Just stick with that. So start with one side at a time. And now what we're going to be making is a vertical lax head knot. So it's basically the same knot, but we're just working with one cord instead of obviously using the middle of a cord and attaching it. So I'm just going to start on my right side here. So the one going to the right, I'm going to come back over the top and then put the loop back underneath there. So it's looping over the top and then back under. And then make sure when you pull it through all the way, you want to pull it through the loop, and that's what makes the knot. So like that. Push it all the way up and tighten it. So that's one half. Now what we need to do is make sure to come underneath first. So we just went over and then back and around. So now we need to come underneath here from the bottom. Take it around over the top, and then remember it helps pull your fingers through here. You need to take your, the end of your cord back through the loop. So we're doing the exact same thing, it's just in, kind of in the opposite direction around the holding cord. And then tighten that all the way up here. Right next to the very first lax head knot. And now you just made another one. And that's sitting right next to that. And you basically want to keep doing this for a bit. So again, I'm going to show you one more time. Take your cord over the holding cord, back underneath and pull it through the loop. So it looks like that, making sure you're looping through the loop there as well. Tighten that all the way down. 
and then we need to bring the cord underneath first back around over the top and back through the loop of itself so it loops around like that and that's the other half of the knot so there we go that's another lax head knot a vertical lax head knot and then you have three in a row here now now you want to keep making a few of these because it's this row that's going to then end up turning into the loop and what I would say is make about half of the loop with this cord so working in this direction here in my case towards the right so keep building knots on there but then you also need to use the cord on the other side equally so that once we've made the loop we end up with roughly equal lengths left so all you do is the same thing take this one go back over the top back around underneath pull it through tighten it go below first back around over the top and then through the loop so as you see it's the exact same thing just on the other side and tighten that and then that's another lax head knot as well now I'm only saying this just so we end up with roughly the same lengths on each side to then be able to move on and make the bracelet here so we use them pretty equally so make however long you need of this row to be to then accommodate for the for whatever button that you've chosen to use because obviously the opening in the loop needs to be able to fit the button through it so now that I've finished making this row of knots here you obviously want to make sure that it's going to fit with whatever button that you're using and what you want to do is I'm just taking it off the board here and then I'm going to start shaping it you can obviously do this to test it as well and then always add more knots if you need to then what you want to make sure to do is the working cords that you use to make these knots you want to make sure that they're pointing outwards so you bring in the two holding cords or the two ends of the holding cord together like that I'm just going to keep hold of it there and then I can just test it against my button to see if I need to add anything or if it fits just nicely and that fits just right so now that I've done the loop basically the length that I need for the loop I can then keep working and we need to get into the proper part of the bracelet so the actual pattern but first we just want to obviously secure the ends in place so the loop here so it becomes one solid loop that can actually be used so what I'm just going to do is put them together like this on my board the ends and then I'm going to use some pins just to fasten them down makes it a little bit easier to work with I'm just going to put them through the knots here just like that and then they're sitting nicely like that because then we have the two holding cords that have the one holding cord that's now turned into two here because they're coming straight downwards from the ends of the knots there the two working cords are going out to the side I want to fasten these ends by making a square knot with my two working cords here so I just take one side over the other so I take my left one over the two holding cords in the middle and then my right one goes over that underneath all the cords in the middle and then up through the loop on that first side so you have something that looks a bit like that and then you want to just tighten this and this is then what secures this loop in place so that's one half of the square knot to make the other half we need to take the opposite side over first and then take the other side over that underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop and that's the other half of the square knot when you tighten that that then makes one full square knot and then you have your loop in place so you can see it's nice and tight now so we're going to be able to use that as a loop at the end of the bracelet so when you're happy with the loop I still just use it to hold my piece in place because obviously we then need to get into the proper pattern here of making the bracelet itself so I've started out with the loop and we've now got the cords in position as well to then be able to make the first section of the bracelet itself. So then the first thing we're going to do is start with one side. So we have the two cords in the middle here. These are the two holding cords. They're kind of going to go to each their own side. So one is more towards the right and one is going to stay towards the left. So I'm going to start with one side like I said. doesn't matter which one because we'll be doing the exact same thing. Just mirror it obviously. So the outer one is the working cord. That's the one we made the square knot with just there so what I'm going to do first of all is make a vertical lax head knot so I'll bring my working cord over the holding cord which is the one more in the middle 
and back around and through the loop so it looks like this you get a six and make sure it comes through the loop there tighten it all the way up and then we need to go underneath back around and through with the working cord and I like to just kind of hold my holding cord a bit outwards in an angle from the middle there so that's the first step and now we need to start adding in our beads so what I'm going to do is I take my holding cord that's the one we're making the knots around I'm going to add my first three millimeter bead to that let that drop all the way down there and then on the outside cord which is the working cord this is where we then need to add our seed beads so these are then the 11 or seed beads I've added them onto here and then let them drop all the way down so they're going to sit like this on the outside of the 3mm bead and I've added 4 in this case if you're using different materials and different sizes of say beads or cord you might need to add a different amount but you can just work that out by having a look and see what's going to fit and then make sure it's all pushed all the way down there so they won't go any further then I'm going to take my working cord again and take it over the top back around and through the loop of the holding cord there so it loops around the holding cord making that six then tighten it all the way up that's the first half of the next knot make sure it's pushed as far up as it'll go then we need to take the working cord underneath back around and through to complete this vertical lax head knot so there we go that's the first little beaded section added and basically now we need to do the exact same thing again so I add my three millimeter bead to the holding cord so basically the inside one of the two let that drop down and then to the outside one which is the working cord we need to add our seed beads again again I'm adding the four seed beads and letting them drop all the way down so they're going to sit like this then we need to cage all this in, fasten the beads in place by taking the working cord over the holding cord back around and through the loop so it loops around again like this tighten this make sure all the beads are pushed down then we need to go underneath back around and through and tighten that and then that's the second beaded section so you have these little beaded edges along the outside of the three millimeter beads there that's just the materials that I'm using obviously and you want to do a few more of these on this side on the other side you want to basically do exactly the same thing just mirrored so we we'll start out with just making that first vertical lax head knot so that means I take the outside one that's the working card comes over back around and through so on the other side it looks like a reverse six like that tighten that all the way up and then we go underneath back around and through and you get your reverse six and then you tighten that all the way up and then on this side as well you add your three millimeter bead to the inside cord so the holding cord here like that and then you want to add all your seed beads to the outside one which is the working cord and again let them drop all the way down right next to that three millimeter bead on the outside there and then we need to cage this in again with a vertical lax head knot where I then take the working cord it goes over the holding cord back around and through the loop so it loops around like this tighten that all the way up make sure you get all the beads in place and then we need to go underneath back around and through so again you get your reverse six and it's looping around just in the opposite direction than the one that we just did and there we go tighten that so that's the first beaded section on that side so you want to do a few of these on each side and then I'll show you the next step so I've now done both sides here and what I've ended up with on mine is I've done four beaded sections on each side basically so you can basically say that's four of the three mil beads where you then have that seed bead flourish on the outside so that's just the size that I would like these to be obviously if you're using different materials or if you want a different look you can always adjust the amount of these but then they come together nicely as well as you can see you have a little curve on each side outward and then they come together nicely right at the end there so this is where we then want to connect them again so to just help keep them in place I'm just going to use some more pins just to make it a little bit easier to work with I'm going to just 
place them where I have my two holding cards basically coming straight in towards each other and right the two ends of the rows are right next to each other as well. So I'm just placing my pins to make that a little bit easier. So there we go. And then I have the two holding cards coming straight down and these are now again the holding cards but kind of now together as one. So I'm going to use my two working cards to bring the two sides together and again I'm going to do this by just using a square knot just like we did up there. So I take my left one over the middle then I take the right one over that left one here on that right side bring that underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop on the left side. And you can just hold your holding cards nice and taut there. That's one half of the square knot. Then we do the opposite, so take the right side over, the left side goes over that, underneath everything in the middle. Make sure you catch both holding cards there, and up through the loop. And then pull that tight. And I've now secured these two beaded sides nicely together and they're nice and secure there. But what I want to do is just do one more, just to have a decent amount of spacing. So the next section that we're going to do, the beads, especially the flourish there, isn't going to kind of obstruct with each other. So I'm just going to do one more square knot in the exact same way. Now you can also do your square knot starting from the other side if you prefer that. If that's how you naturally work, that's completely fine. doesn't make a difference whatsoever. It's just personal preference. I naturally just start from my left side. So I'll make another square knot. So we now have two there. And now we're ready and in a position where we can then make the next section. And all we do now is repeat the exact same thing. So I'm going to make this beaded section again, so over and over, separated out and put together, connected together by these two square knots in between each of the sections. And that's all there is to this. Keep repeating this for however long you need this to be. Bear in mind you have the loop and at the end all we're going to do then is attach the button that we're going to use to go through the loop. So you need to make the long length that you need. Obviously it taken into account the loop and the bead as well. So the loop and the button that we're going to need for the closure. So keep doing this. I then kept going here, making the same step over and over again until I reach about the length that I want my bracelet to be. So what I just want to mention, this is going to be about an average size bracelet, so about seven to a seven and a half inch. So what I would say, if you want to make it longer than this, if you need a longer bracelet, I'd recommend that you make your working length of cord, so the longest length that I mentioned in the beginning, that you make that longer than what I said, just to make sure that you don't run out along the way. Because I've ended up with my short length, so I can't really make any more. This fits just perfectly for this average length bracelet. And also, with the materials that I've used here, I've ended up with eight of these little waves all the way along until I reach this size. Now again, this will be different. If you use some different materials or different size materials, then you might end up with more or less. So just judge it on your length that you need. But then what we need to do now is actually finish off the other end and add the button as well. So then down here on this end where we've ended up after making the length of the bracelet, then we need to add in a button here to be able to make the closure on the other end. To obviously be able to make that in conjunction with the loop that we made. What I've actually ended up with down here as well is I made some square knots just like in between each section. But what I finished off with here is four square knots rather than just the two like normal. How many you do is completely up to you really. It doesn't really matter. I would also say it depends on your button. So say if you're using a larger button, you might want it to sit a bit further down so it doesn't overlap the last little wave there. Whereas if you're using a small one, you can get away with using less. So it's completely up to what materials that you're using and how you want it to sit. But then I'm at this point now where I want to add my button. So what I'm going to do is grab the two holding cords and then I want to put both of these through my button. So I'm using the shank button there. And just put both of them through the same, in the same direction. And then have it go all the way up to just below that last square knot. And then sit right there. And it's going to sit just nicely right at the end of the bracelet, right at the end of the design there. And what I want to do is, if you have a preference to what side of the bracelet you want to be, the front and the back, really to this design that isn't the front and the back, but if you do have a preference, make sure that the button is facing in the direction of the front of the bracelet. So that's just a little hint there to make sure of that if you do have a preference. But then what I'm going to do is cage in this button just like we were caging a bead using a square nut on the other side of the button. So make sure it's pushed all the way up 
and then I want to make a square knot with my little lengths that I have left here. Just continue the same way, start with the same side that you normally do just to keep it nice and consistent and then just push it all the way up tighten that nicely, make sure obviously your cords go underneath the button there and then the other side to make it a full square knot Now my lengths are a bit short here so it's a bit fiddly but it looks plenty to finish it off and there, that's the full square knot just there and now we've done one square knot on the other side of the button and it has fastened it in place but what I prefer to do is just do a couple square knots here it makes it a bit more secure than just doing one so I'm just going to do a couple, maybe about two or three in total again it depends on your button I would say if it's quite a large button you can get away with doing a few more because obviously the button itself covers a larger area without the end of your square knots there sticking out because you don't want to be able to see them from the front ideally but I'm just going to do I think I'm going to do two here, it's going to fit just nicely make my other square knot complete this tighten that so there we go so now that button is going to sit there really nicely and securely and you can see it's facing that one direction so this is then going to be the front of my bracelet so now that the button is in place I can undo my bracelet from my board here so I'm taking the pins out just so we can have a better look as well and all that's left to do is finish off the ends of our cords now just make sure that your last knots here are nice and tight and you can see that just that shank on the button is captured nice in place because of those square knots so now we want to finish off these and how you do that depends a bit on the materials that you've used as well so I've used a synthetic cord here, it's a nylon cord so what I'm going to do is just singe down the ends with a lighter if you used a natural cord, say a cotton cord or something you'll probably have to use glue instead because you won't be able to singe it down so all you would do is just add some glue on the last few square knots I would say do it on the last few, not just the last one and around the ends of your cord and then go in and cut off the excess right down to the knot but if you don't want to singe it down if you've used a synthetic cord like what I have what I do is then cut down, so I make, so I make sure that they're nice and tight, the last knots there. I cut down the excess, so I have one or two millimeters left. So I don't cut them all the way down to the knot, but I just have a couple of millimeters left. So something like that. I'm just going to do those first and then I grab a lighter here now obviously we are working with a naked flame in this case so you want to be careful because it is hot and you just want to take care when using a naked flame like this and then all you want to do is those little ends that we have left after cutting off the excess I'm going to use my lighter to singe those down so just gently get near the cord so it melts and then you use that and I like to just use my finger to press it in or you can use the lighter itself to press it in and then that seals the end in place so it's not going to come undone but also gives it a nice and neat finish and seamless as well so you don't have something that's too bulky or too obvious there so that's those and then I do the same thing basically with the two long ones left here at the end I cut them down so I have just a couple millimeters left at the end so make sure you don't cut them all the way down to the knot because then they'll probably come undone before you have a chance to singe them in and there won't be anything to melt here either and then I just take my lighter again singe this down so melt it basically and then just pressing it in seals it nicely in place and there we go and there you then have the ends finished off nicely as well so this is then the bracelet completely finished now obviously if you use glue you want to make sure to just let it dry before you can use it if you used a natural cord like I said but then otherwise this is in the finished bracelet so a nice delicate little one that can get many different looks depending what materials that you use Then all you do is use the button there you have a nice and simple and easy to wear bracelet but it gives a nice really 
little effect there all the way around. So that's how you make this bracelet, nice and simple one. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this Celtic inspired micro macrame bracelet. And this is what it looks like. So you get this really nice Celtic inspired effect with all your cord here, kind of like weaving in and out. It isn't really, but it appears to be. So that's the effect that you get. And then I just added beads all the way along as well, little tiny ones, just to add a little bit of extra effect to it. You can leave out the beads if you want to, or say just add them on the outer edge. That's completely up to you. 